Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. Today in this video we will see how to interface a BLDC motor with SDM32. This video will only cover the interfacing of those motors, which are connected with the Electronic Speed Controller, or ESC. If you don't have the ESC, and directly want to control the motor, this video is not for you. BLDC motors can be controlled via the very similar process as we used, to control the servo motor. I am going to use a potentiometer, connected via the ADC to control the speed of the motor. We will see that, but first let's see the connection. Here is my setup. I have the 30 ampere ESC, which is powered by a 12 volts adapter. The ESC is connected to the 1400 kV motor. The two side pins can be connected to either side of the motor, as it controls the direction of rotation. The center pin from the ESC should be connected to the center pin of the motor. Here the yellow wire is the center wire, and the other two you can connect however you want. Three pin header cable from the ESC is responsible for controlling the speed of the motor. This is just like the three pin wire we see in a servo motor, with red being the VCC, brown being the ground, and yellow is the signal pin. The VCC and ground have the potential difference of 5 volts, so you can use this to power the controller. I have connected them to the 5 volt pin on my F103 controller. The signal pin is connected to the pin PA8, which I will set as the PWM output pin later. I have connected one potentiometer to the pin PA0, and this will be used to control the speed of the motor. This is it for the connection, let's understand how this is going to work. As I mentioned, the BLDC can be controlled in the same way as the servo motor. I have already written a tutorial about the servo motor, so we will follow the same. As I mentioned here, we need a PWM signal of time period 20 milliseconds, or a 50 Hz frequency. Then the speed can be controlled by varying the pulse width between 1 millisecond, to 2 milliseconds. That is all we need to do. Let's see how we can do this with the F103 controller. Start the IDE, and create a new project. I am using the SDM32 F103 C8 controller. Give some name to the project, and click finish. First of all I am selecting an external crystal to provide the clock. The board has 8 MHz crystal on it, and I want to run the system at maximum 72 MHz. I am also using an ADC for the potentiometer, and I want to keep the ADC clock to minimum. This is because I don't want the ADC to trigger the interrupts at a very high rate. I have already explained the ADC conversion time in another video, you can check that out. Anyway, this is the minimum I can set, so let's go with it. Note that the APB2 timer clock is at 9 MHz now. I am going to use the timer 1 for the PWM, which is connected to the APB2 bus. So the APB2 timer clock is going to be the base clock for our timer. Select the debug as serial wire, and time base as sys tick. Let's configure the ADC first. I am using channel 0, and remember that the potentiometer is connected to pin PA0. I want the conversion to happen continuously, so enable it. As I mentioned I don't want the interrupt to trigger at a very high rate, so I am selecting the maximum sampling time. We will let the DMA handle these conversions. Make sure to enable the circular mode. F103 has a 12-bit ADC, so half word is good enough. The DMA interrupt is enabled, so we are good to go. Now let's configure the timer 1. I am using channel 1 as the PWM generation. Note here the pin PA8 is selected as the PWM pin, and this is where I have connected the signal pin of the ESC. Timer 1 is connected to the APB2 clock, which is at 9 MHz right now. Let's understand the calculations before we configure the timer. 
We know the timer's output frequency can be calculated using this formula. Now if I want the output frequency of 50 Hz, I can use the prescaler of 180, and the auto reload of 1000. Using auto reload of 1000 is better instead of 100, because our pulse width is small, and so does the duty cycle. With the reload value of 1000, we can accumulate more values for the duty cycle, as compared to the value of 100. You will understand this in a while. So we know the minimum pulse width is going to be 1 millisecond, which is 5% of the 20 milliseconds. But our auto reload is at 1000, so a 5% duty means we have the value 50. So 1 millisecond is equivalent to the value 50 in our case. Similarly 2 milliseconds will be equivalent to the value 100. Now since we have the auto reload of 1000, we could use the values from 50 to 100, but if we had 100 here, we could only use the values from 5 to 10. This is why I kept the auto reload at 1000, instead of 100. Alright let's set the values. The prescaler is 180, and auto reload is 1000. We will leave the rest of the setup to default. This pulse value will be changed, during the runtime itself, based on the input we get from the potentiometer. This is it for the setup, click save to generate the project. Let's write the code now. First we will start the timer in PWM mode. I am using timer 1 channel 1. Now start the ADC in the DMA mode. We will define the ADC data variable in a while, and there is only one conversion. Define the variable to store the ADC value. We need to convert the raw ADC value to our range of PWM values, so we will store the converted values in this variable. Now when the DMA will finish the conversion, the conversion completed callback will be called. Let's copy this definition. I am using the map function from the Arduino source code, to map the ADC values to our range. The values will be stored in the converted variable. We want to map the ADC data variable value, the minimum value of this variable can be 0, and the maximum can be 4095, since it's a 12-bit ADC value. The minimum output value can be 50, and the maximum can be 100. This is as per the duty cycle we calculated earlier. So basically, when the potentiometer reads 0, this function will output 50, and when the potentiometer is at maximum 4095, this function will output 100. Now we need to send these values to our timer, so that the duty cycle can be varied. I am using timer 1 channel 1, so the CCR1, that is Capture Compare Register 1. You can use another Capture Compare Register, if you are using another channel of your timer. If you are familiar with BLDC motors, you might know that we also need to calibrate the ESC. This code will do that for you. Basically we set the maximum duty, that is the pulse of 2 milliseconds and wait for some time. The ESC will sound the beep indicating it has been calibrated for the high pulse. Now send the lowest duty, that is the pulse of 1 millisecond, and again wait for some time. The ESC will again sound the beep indicating it has been calibrated for the low pulse. I have defined this at the top of the file, so that you can enable this only if you want to calibrate. Alright let's build the code. The start DMA function takes a 32-bit variable, so let me typecast this. Alright everything is set now, let's debug the code. 
I will use the motor later, first we will see the results in the debugger and the logic analyzer. We will monitor the ADC converted variable. Here the potentiometer is at zero, so the value is 50. And if I move the potentiometer to maximum, the value has been increased to 100. Let's see the pulse timing on in the logic analyzer. I have connected the pin PA8 to the channel 0 of the analyzer. Here you can see the pulse remains high for 1 millisecond out of 20 milliseconds period. And now I am rotating the potentiometer to the maximum position. Now we have the pulse with the width of 2 milliseconds. Here the value of the variable is 100. So the pulse timing is correct, let's switch on the motor. I will disconnect the controller, so that it will directly get the power from the ESC itself. You can hear the set of beeps produced by the ESC, it means the calibration is completed. Let's rotate the motor. You can judge the speed by listening to the sound it is making. So the motor is rotating fine, and we were able to control it using the potentiometer. If you don't want to do the calibration, just set this definition to zero, and this particular code will be excluded. This is it for the video. I hope you understood how we can control the BLDC motor using the SDM32. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching and have a nice day ahead.